I'm Dr. Ben Weinberg. I'm a gastrointestinal medical oncologist at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. I specialize in the treatment of patients with colon and pancreatic cancers. We administer a variety of different treatments. The treatment we're probably most well known for is chemotherapy, but we also administer targeted therapy and immunotherapy. So we sort of form the, the quarterback of the team that takes care of patients with cancer. So we work closely with radiation oncologists, surgeons, gastroenterologists, pathologists, and a variety of other support staff to help our cancer patients. We used to tell people, you know, wait one month, two months, three months, a year, and a new treatment will become available. And it used to take much longer than that. Now the field is moving so quickly, it's almost hard to stay on top of all the advances that we're having. And those advances have basically come in one of two forms. One is immunotherapy, and immunotherapy works by training your body's immune system to take care of the cancer itself. And the other is targeted therapy. If we can figure out the mechanisms by which the cancer cell divides and grows, we could be able to stop the cancer cell in its tracks if we can find drugs that target those mechanisms. We have a couple of benefits at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. One is our team. So we have excellent surgeons, excellent radiation oncologists, excellent gastroenterologists who are really leaders in the field. And we work together as a team to come up with treatment plans that are best for patients. The other thing is we're on the cutting edge of different research strategies. So immunotherapy clinical trials and targeted therapy clinical trials. So treatments that we think are promising but are not yet FDA approved to treat cancer, we have access to those drugs here. And if appropriate, we can get patients on those trials. Being at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital, we definitely operate in the pursuit of cure personnel, so treatment care of the whole person. So not just focusing on their cancer, but what effects the cancer is having on their body, what effect the treatment is having on their body, other psychosocial issues that we tend to not spend as much time talking about, but trying to focus on those when it's critically important for our patients. There's nothing better than to feel like you've really benefited a patient's life, and, and especially if that results in something like a cure. We often don't know for quite some time whether a cure is truly a cure, so a lot of what we do is monitor patients very closely after they've finished uh, whatever treatment, not only to make sure that they're truly cured, but to see what side effects of the treatments can crop up later on in life. So there's a lot of aspects to survivorship that are critically important to manage. Um, but that feeling, that sensation is, is truly rewarding. Pancreas cancer often presents with sort of vague symptoms, unfortunately, and that's another reason why it's so deadly and found so late. Sometimes it's just vague abdominal discomfort, definitely upper abdominal discomfort. Sometimes it's change in stool, so like new diarrhea, uh, fatty stools that float um, and are greasy, maybe a sign of pancreas enzymes not getting into the GI tract, which could be a sign of pancreas issues. And then upper GI issues like bad reflux, bad um, post eating pain, uh, feeling full very quickly, and then the generic cancer findings of weight loss, um, pain, um, issues with decreased appetite, those can all be found in pancreatic cancer. The five-year survival of pancreas cancer today is still only 9%. And if you have metastatic disease or disease that's spread outside the pancreas at the time of diagnosis, it's only about 2.7% of people are alive at five years. So those numbers are dismal and staggering and sometimes very difficult to absorb. We are moving the bar, though. So 9%, while it doesn't sound good, is, has been improving every year for the last several years. And part of that you know, will mostly come from early detection. So when pancreas cancer is already spread to other parts of the body, it's very difficult to treat and control. Uh, it's not curable, but we can treat it with drugs to help try to keep it in check for a time. What will most likely save most lives with pancreas cancer is a better early screening test, which so far we unfortunately don't have. And most likely that will be in the form of a blood test that is sensitive and specific so that when it's positive, it's a very good indicator that it's a pancreas cancer, not something else. And that will often lead to further invasive testing like biopsies to figure out if a cancer is there or not. Um, those tests are in development, and I think as time goes on, we, we're better at doing liquid blood tests to find evidence of cancer. Uh, and that will eventually lead to more people being detected earlier stage who can actually undergo a curative surgery. The other issue with pancreatic cancer is even for the quote unquote lucky few who are able to be diagnosed at an early stage and undergo a curative surgical resection, 
the minority of those patients are actually cured. So patients who have a curative surgery for pancreas cancer, the standard recommendation is still to undergo chemotherapy either before or afterwards uh, to kill microscopic tumor stem cells that are too small to be seen on any scan that are likely out there. And we've shown over many years and decades that patients who get additional systemic treatment like chemotherapy that goes throughout the body, those patients live longer than patients who just get the surgery by itself. And with better chemotherapy, we're actually seeing patients with resected pancreatic cancer, pancreas cancer that's been surgically removed, live longer and longer. Uh, so that's one of the bright spots in the treatment of pancreatic cancer. Part of the reason why pancreas cancer is so tough to treat is on the microscopic level, it actually walls itself off from the body. It has what we call this dense desmoplastic stroma of non-cancer uh, cells that it uses to sort of build real barriers. Um, those include barriers to immune cells that prevent immune cells from getting to the tumor, and also blood cell, uh, blood vessels and our treatment. All of that has to get to the tumor using blood vessels as the highway, and if there's roadblocks built that the cancer is built up around itself, it can't get to the tumor at all. So a lot of our treatments that we're trying to develop in clinical trials are treatments that go in and bust up those barriers, break them down so that immune cells, chemotherapy, targeted therapy can get to the tumor itself. A good probably 20 to 25 percent of patients with advanced pancreas cancer that have uh, a mutation in their tumor that's targetable. And we think a lot of patients have um, a mutation in the BRCA or BRCA family of genes, um, which is not just BRCA but several others that are also implicated with risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer. And those tumors may have an Achilles heel that we can target with a specific type of chemotherapy and a novel agent called a PARP inhibitor, P-A-R-P. And those two drugs may synergize so that we can synthetically kill the cancer cell by exploiting a pathway those cancers used to divide. And so we have to be knowledgeable as oncologists to try to tease out the family history to identify patients that may be at risk for those hereditary cancer syndromes, because it may not just impact screening of family members to find cancers, but may actually impact their treatment as well using these novel treatment options. It's now essentially recommended for anyone with pancreas cancer to do what we call germline genetic testing. So there's some genetic testing that's done on normal T cells in your body, and then there's other testing that's done on the cancer cell only. And there's definitely some overlap because that cancer cell has a lot of the genes that, you know, are found in the rest of your body, but there may be new mutations in the cancer cell that allow the cancer cell to grow. So we will often do genetic testing on the cancer cell to decide treatment, but the more of that testing we do, we sometimes find mutations in genes that we think are inherited. And then it's imperative for us to do what we call germline DNA testing, which is usually either a blood test or a cheek swab, so that we can send off your normal cells to find did you inherit a mutation that is also found in the tumor, but that caused the tumor to grow and that you could potentially pass on to your offspring, have other family members with that mutation, that impacts what screening should be done to find cancers early. But now we find it may actually impact the treatment as well because certain drugs work best in patients with those types of cancers. We don't really have a lot of great ideas as to what causes pancreas cancer. We do know that there are certain risk factors that we can modify. One is smoking is probably the biggest one. There are other risk factors like diabetes and what we call chronic pancreatitis or inflammation in the pancreas that gets repeated over many years. All of those are insults to the pancreas that lead to inflammation, and inflammation leads to lots of cell turnover, more cell turnover, more potential to acquire new mutations. Some of those mutations can cause cancer. So that's how we think a pancreas cancer develops. The other issue is with hereditary pancreas cancer syndromes. So one is the BRCA uh, mutation pathway, which is also implicated in breast, ovarian, uh, prostate cancer. But there are a variety of others um, specifically known, rarer uh, inherited uh, breast cancer, other cancer syndromes that lead to the formation of pancreas cancer. So we have to have a high level of suspicion, especially with multiple family members with pancreas and other cancers, that it may be one of those inherited cancer mutation syndromes that's leading the cause of the cancer. Because of where the pancreas is, it's in a busy part of the body, it's next to the GI tract, it's next to a lot of blood vessels and nerves. Sometimes it's very hard to cut the pancreas 
uh, cancer out without harming those vital structures. So sometimes we have to give a lot of therapy like chemotherapy and or radiation up front to pull the cancer away from those vital structures, structures so that it can actually be surgically removed. But even after a cancer is surgically removed, there's still extremely high rates of recurrence both near the pancreas itself, but also throughout the body. So for that reason, we often recommend things like systemic chemotherapy to go and kill microscopic tumor stem cells that are likely out in the periphery somewhere before they grow large enough to be seen on any sort of CT scan. Uh, so it's a multidisciplinary type of treatment for pancreas cancer. It's not just one doc, it's a whole group, a team of physicians that are designed to do what's best for the patient. Pancreatic cancer, we're looking at a couple different ways um, to make our therapies more effective. One is immunotherapy or immune checkpoint inhibitors, which have been very successful in cancers like melanoma, skin cancer, lung cancer, kidney cancer, bladder cancer, only works in about 1% of patients with pancreas cancer. So can we make the other 99% of patients with pancreas cancer respond to the drugs the same way it does in those other cancer types? And that's through a variety of different things. So can we stimulate the immune system with things like vaccines to retrain the immune system to go after the cancer and then use these immunotherapy drugs to cut the brakes on the immune system, unleash it so it can actually go and attack the cancer. The other thing is the cancer tries to wall itself off from other areas within the tumor microenvironment uh, by making these sort of substances that wall itself off. And we now have drugs that can actually go after some of those substances, break down those barriers to allow our drugs like chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and our own immune cells into the tumor so it can go attack the cancer. So, and then the, the last issue is targeted therapy. So we now know that probably 20, 25% of pancreas cancers have some sort of targetable mutation that the cancer used to grow, but that we have a drug that can target it. So if we can get enough tumor tissue, we can do broad DNA sequencing to find those mutations and identify those patients who can benefit from novel targeted drugs. The trials we have going on here are immunotherapy combination trials, so trying to add immunotherapy to some other agent to make it work in pancreas cancer. And then there are a variety of trials that combine chemotherapy with targeted agents or immunotherapy to see can we improve upon the chemotherapy backbones that we have now. At MedStar Georgetown University Hospital, we offer treatment for the whole patient in our pursuit of cure personalis. So it's not just treating the patient their cancer, but it's treating their symptoms, their symptoms of their cancer, their side effects from their treatment, but also working with a cohesive group of docs to find what's best for the patient and their family.